Get everyone, BH and Dad here. We're going to do the in depth review of this Dell Latitude 3310. It's a 13 inch laptop for education, so it is geared towards your students. And that ranges from primary, high school, or even university students. So we're going to actually look at the internals of this computer later in the video, as well as temperature and noise of this computer, and we'll also look at the speakers as well. Now I will put putting timestamps along this video so you can actually skip to the different sections of the areas that you would be interested in. But first off, let's start with what this computer can be configured with. So first off, this computer is using the eighth generation Intel Core. If you're getting the Intel Core, there is a Celeron version of this as well. And I really would not really advise the Celeron version. I would say just spend a little extra cash and just go straight to the i3 version. And there is also an i5 version as well. Now, with the RAM wise, it does have one DIMM slot, so it can go up to a maximum of 16 gigs of RAM. And as for the hard drive wise, it has one slot of M.2, and that can go at the maximum of 256 gigs for you. Now it is using the Intel integrated graphics, and as for the display wise, it is a full HD IPS display. It does have touch as well, and it also is rated at 220 nits of brightness. So this is actually bit lower on brightness, but that's what you see in a lot of the latitude range for the business range as well. So full HD and still got touch, that's pretty good at the sort of price this range is built for. The screen type is a sort of glossy type of display. So it's not like one of those matte ones, so it's a glossy sort of type of display. Let's have a look at the ports. Starting on the left hand side of the computer, we've got the AC barrel style power port, and then we have a USB-C port. Now this one is USB 3.2 Gen 1, and then we have the RJ45 Ethernet port, and then we have a HDMI port. Now, this is version 1.4a, and then we have a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, which is type A port. Looking on the right hand side of the computer, we've got the headphone jack, and then we've got the micro SD card reader, and then a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, which is type A, and this one does support PowerShare. And then we have the security lock slot. The Latitude 3310 does come with a 720p RGB webcam, so you can do your video conferencing with this computer as well. This is a recording from the built-in 720p webcam, and this is the RGB version of it. Now this is the video and audio unedited, so you can see what the quality is like. Now I've actually got two types of lights currently turned on. I've got one of my studio lights, which is shining on me, which is quite bright. And I've also got some down lights in this current room. Now I'm going to turn off the studio lights so you can see what it looks like with the ambient light. So I've actually got two down lights behind me. Also got two down lights uh, in front of me as well, which is a bit further away. So there's not really much light that's actually on my face. So this is what you would call low light. And I would love to hear what your thoughts are with what this quality of the video and audio is like. So definitely put a comment below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Now, I will actually put, turn on my studio light back on so you can see what it looks like. And of course, with better lighting, you also get better picture as well. There are two speakers located in the bottom front of the computer. Now, when I tested out the maximum loudness of the speakers, it managed to peak at 83.2 decibels. So that's actually quite loud for a computer like this. So it should be able to get through a lot of the other children and other volumes there. So that's not too bad at all. As for the sound quality of the speakers, it actually surprised me. I was expecting some really bad speakers, especially for when it's geared towards students, but these were what I would call average. Uh, as for the bass, it's not really there. As for the mids, it's okay. I would say it's Quite acceptable and and when it gets to the maximum volume it does distort a little bit but surprisingly I was expecting them to put some really you know really cheap end speakers in it but as for the acoustic wise it actually did all right so that kind of surprised me so overall it actually better performed than what I was expecting for a laptop for students let's look at the keyboard the keyboard on the latitude 3310 is a very very rugged feel type and rough Keyboard, it is going to stand the width of time for sure. I can tell you that uh, for each individual key, the surface type of the keys are quite a bit of a rough plastic feel to it, and of course, it's got quite a nice sort of individual spacing between each keys as well. And there's a fair bit of key travel as well. And as for the sound of the keys, 
they're, they're quite acceptable. They're not like really loud and they're not soft neither as well. And you've got to say, I can definitely feel of this keyboard. It's definitely really going to take a lot of beating, which is kind of good for, especially where if you got children working on this computer here. So this is a very nice rugged sort of computer. I don't see it breaking down too much as well. And as for the trackpad, it is, uh, it's pretty much nearly flush all the way through along with the palm rest here for the key. And there are two buttons that's separated and it is, um, at the top is where the hinge is, so the, only the bottom part is the mechanical where you will feel it come down. Uh, it does multi-touch of course, so that's kind of nice for where that is. And as for the feel of the keyboard, it's actually not even a matte feel, it's more like a, it feels very similar to the plastic on the sides of the palm rest, so that's got a very similar feel to it, which means this thing's going to last the test of time. This thing is just built for durability, I can definitely tell you that. And I also say, with the actual palm rest, you've actually got a fair bit of resting for the palm, so just like I'm an adult, so as for the more younger kids, I think you'll be fine. They actually, I've, if I'm actually on my home keys and I'm doing all right, yeah, you see, we've actually got a fair bit of length for the palm rest and you won't get too much wrist pain at all. So I definitely think the actual palm rest is doing a fairly good job. Now as for the build construction, this is pretty much polycarbon all the way through, like plastic all the way through the back end, front end, top as well. This thing is just rugged, like I can't really twist this up much at all. So this thing is rugged and even if you can probably push this down, um, even, even up with the keyboard, the same thing. Oh, that is rugged. I think you can probably have this, have a card drive all of this and I think this will survive it. That's how rugged I think this thing could be. It's not part of the rugged series, that's even more rugged, but this can take fair bit of beating. So I'm impressed and this is definitely built to be chucked around. Well, I don't suggest you chuck it around, but for kids, they will just probably chuck it around, right? Um, hopefully, uh, this thing will definitely take the test of time for us. And because of the, of the plastic, this thing is just, it's like your phone case is just built to like take a beating. That's what this computer is designed for. Uh, and it's also, also along, I can see from the side of each panel, there's these little plastic extra rubber bits and that's to actually keep the display panel from actually touching the keyboard too much when it's got a lot of a lot of thing here so definitely that's just a little built-in function I think for the design wise to actually keep this thing rugged here so very nice I've got to say uh, for the build construction I quite like it um, especially for kids I think this is well designed for that as for the display it does have a fairly a lot of bezel around the display panel and I think that's more to actually keep the ruggedness of this computer so it has a better integrity. So it's not like a really nice infinity edge. I wouldn't expect that for a computer for especially for students because they can actually bang it up and probably beat it and probably give it a nice punch or so. But they love to actually touch it as well too. So this thing is designed for a lot of touching, uh, a lot of movement, a lot of bending as well. So I really don't expect it to have those infinity edge because those are very, very easy to crack on the sides of the panels all the way to the edge. So this isn't one of those computer here, so don't expect something like that. But I've got to say, I think this will do fairly well. The Latitude 3310 comes with a 65 watt power adapter and it does charge through the barrel style. But you can charge the computer by its USB-C if you're connected to a dock or other docks replicated ports as well. So that is able to charge through the USB-C if you do have a USB-C docking station. As for the battery wise, it can be configured with a 42 or a 56 watt hour battery and it does support express charge. So what that means is you can actually charge the battery from zero to 80% charge in one hour's time. And it takes just less than about two hours to charge from zero to all the way to a hundred max. I did perform the battery life test on this particular unit. Now when I do the battery life test, I do put a very consistent workload on the computer and that's the processor, RAM and hard drive at 100% and also have the screen brightness at 100% too. So in best performance mode, it managed to get an hour and 30 minutes. Now when I put it in better performance mode, it managed to get an hour and 40 minutes. And then I usually drop the actual load of the processing to about 50% and I drop the screen brightness to 50% and I actually put it in in better battery mode so this is probably what you'll be in in most average use and again this is in constant and i managed to get 
five hours and 30 minutes. And in battery saving mode, it managed to get six hours and 20 minutes. Now I've got to remember this is with consistent workloads on the processor, RAM, and also the hard drive. Now you probably won't be smashing it out like I do, so you should actually get a little bit better battery life mode out of that. Now I did put it in my special new mode, which is called media mode, and that's pretty much having the computer connected to Wi-Fi with streaming YouTube the whole way through with the screen brightness at 50% and the speakers at 50%. And it managed to get eight hours and 40 minutes out of the battery. So this is with what you expect for the average use with office productivity work around about eight hours or so. So the weight of the Dell Latitude 3310 is 1.63 kilos and add in the 65 watt power adapter becomes a total of 1.96 kilos. When I tested out the temperatures and fan noise of the Latitude 3310, I found when the computer is on low, the hottest area is near the top middle of the keyboard, specifically around that where the Y key is. And that's unsurprising because that's where the processor sits underneath. Now the other area that gets heated up a bit is where the home and F12 key, unsurprising again, because that's where the exhaust vent sits. So they actually expel the hot air on the top rear of the computer. When I did the measurements for this particular computer for temperature and noise, my ambient temperature was 21 degrees Celsius. So I did my base measurement when the computer was on idle and it measured at 30 degrees Celsius at its hottest point with the fan noise at 31 decibels. Then I put the computer on 20% load. So this is what you'll be expecting for average use. So tasks like office productivity work, streaming videos and surfing the web. And the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 43 degrees Celsius and the fan noise had a maximum of 34 decibels. Then I put the computer on 50% load and the maximum temperature for the keyboard was 44 degrees Celsius and for the fan noise it had a maximum of 35 decibels. Then I put the computer at 100% load and the maximum temperature on the keyboard was 45.5 degrees Celsius and the fan noise stayed at 35 decibels. Now this was an optimized mode. Now I did play with the power settings on the power manager and I did put it in ultra performance mode and it pretty much made no difference at all. So it's still at 45.5 degrees Celsius at its hotness and still the fan noise was still at 35 decibels. Now I did also measure the bottom end of the back cover and it measured at a maximum of 57 degrees Celsius. So that's actually quite hot. So I would definitely not recommend this laptop to be sitting on your lap. I don't actually recommend any laptop to be sitting on your lap at all. Definitely have a surface in between so this thing can rest on if you're gonna put this on your lap, else you could actually get quite heated up and cause some damage. Now this computer does get a little bit hot and I've got to also say with the fan noise at 35 decibels, it's not crazy loud, but it is running a little bit of more of a high pitch sound. So a bit of a whine you will hear from that. So I do wish that Dell can actually play with the performance mode or just do an firmware upgrade and actually get the fan noise to come up a little bit more. And so we can actually get a little bit more expelling heat. So we can actually bring down some of the temperatures, but I think it's still pretty decent. Let's have a look at the internals. First off, you need to unscrew the 10 screws holding on the back. Now these screws will stay with the back cover so you actually won't lose them which is fantastic. And then after that you need a little tool to actually pry this thing open. I'm just using my daughter's Play-Doh tool which surprisingly actually works this task very well. And my advice is to actually go from the hinge and then work your way from the side to the front and then from the hinge to the rear and then do it again, rinse and repeat on the other side there from the side and then to the rear. Now I've actually pre undone this one here already to speed things up and this is the internals here. So the first thing we see is the 42 watt hour battery and you see there's actually a bit of a space here. Now that is for the 56 watt hour battery version and it is held in by a few screws. So actually it's held in by about four screws. So there's two here and two here. Now these are brackets so you actually have to remove these brackets before you can actually lift this battery out. Now to undo the battery, you actually just pull this one out and you undo it. But I don't really need to unpull it because we're just looking at what's underneath here. So I'm just pulling it to show you what's underneath and that's pretty much all there is underneath. There's not much to see underneath here. So I'll just pop this one down here. Now 
above the battery we see the one dim slot for the ram and then on the right hand side is the m.2 ssd hard drive here it is a quite a small one so it is a very proprietary one and then on this side here is the wi-fi card and that's pretty much all there is to the internals uh, there is the coin battery and it's connected through here so if you need to reboot that that's where you disconnect that one there and then the process sits underneath here but you don't normally take that because that's part of the system board and then this is the daughter board if it needs to be replaced the uh, usb as well as a micro sd card reader here and in a few places i can see there's a lot of extra harnessing a lot of brackets added to this system here so it is made to be much more durable than my usual latitudes so definitely it is going to be able to take a fair bit of beating and a lot of fours i can see that i did perform the benchmarks for latitude 3310 now this particular unit came configured with an i5 with 8 gigs of ram and 128 gigs of ssd hard drive so i'll put up the scores for pass mark city bench r15 and r20 3d mark pc mark 10 crystal disc mark and geek bench fidel latitude 3310 with its really durable build quality i've got to say this is absolute perfect for young people and also for uni students as well so if I can easily recommend this for students, just its ruggedness of the computer and it has all the basics you need as well for study. Now I just got to make a quick mention again is make sure you get the i3 or i5 version. Don't worry about the Sauron because quite simply you don't want to waste your kids time nor the teachers time and you don't want to waste your own time as well. I think i5 uh, Sauron is quite sluggish there. So just make sure you get the i3 or i5 version of this particular computer. Now if you find this video informative or enjoy it. Again, in order to support me, smack that like button. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button bottom right hand screen. I do try to upload a new video every week. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.